level of learners. I am in the teaching profession for almost five years. I am currently finishing my master's degree, but due to pandemic, I haven't done my thesis yet. During my presentation today, I will be sharing with you my insight and experiences as a young professional. Our webinar today is entitled Self-Improvement for Young Professionals. And for today, I'll be sharing with you knowing and understanding oneself. So I hope that you are now on your most comfortable position. Okay, so shall we start? So now, imagine yourself looking into the mirror. And if you have any mirror beside you, you can have it. Imagine yourself looking into the mirror. Stare at, stare at yourself. What do you see? Do you see a struggling student, teacher, a professor, parent, sister, a daughter, or a son? Do you see your ideal self or your actual self? What is your answer? Do you see your ideal self or your actual self? So later on, you could be able to know if the person that you saw on the mirror is your ideal self or your actual self. I hope that you are going to listen throughout the session for you to be able to know the answer on that question. So therefore, later on, you could be able to know if the persona that you saw on the mirror is your ideal self or your actual self. So stay tuned throughout the discussion. So knowing yourself means understanding your strength and your weaknesses, your passions and your fears, your desires and your dreams. It means being aware of your likes and dislikes and your tolerances and limitations into yourself. Knowing yourself means knowing your purpose in life. This means looking at yourself to find to find out who you really are. It means looking for yourself in the body, then in the mind, then both beyond. Eventually, it means finding out that you are nothing more than the space of awareness in which all of this happens. So you can see and see that in few minutes or you can take a few decades. So to really know oneself is to let go of illusions and misunderstandings and to live in a peaceful freedom that lies beyond who you previously thought you were. Knowing yourself is a never-ending process. It is like learning, a never-ending process. As we need to be in awareness of our changing likes, dislikes, thought, process, the way we look at word or relationship to self and our world. It is like a journey in the flowing river. From its dating point to the ending, the flowing water is never the same or so are we. We learn from each day, add and subtract thoughts, views, judgment, etc. which in turn changes our behavior or so-called the personality. So in life, there are three things that defines who we are. How we see ourselves, how others see us, and who we really are. The first step towards knowing oneself is to know all these three. The second is to understand that as people, we are constantly changing. To you today will not be the same as the you tomorrow. Just like how you yesterday is not the same as you today. Then, the third step is to understand that despite the constant change, we are who we are. Just because you change doesn't mean that you are no longer yourself. Our existence is very much 
as one despite the changes that occurs within us. Let us now go on with the importance of knowing ourselves as a young professional. First, it helps us in our decision making. It helps us to decide properly in our life. Thus, identifying how good you are in terms of, for example, in numbers, then you can decide to go in accounting as a career. And second is appreciating other people. Knowing yourself helps you to know your shortfalls. Examples are impatience, bad temper, etc. This will help you understand people with such same possessions with you. And then, third is knowing our weaknesses. When we identify our weaknesses, what are, for example, the things that what are we not very good at? This help us to relate to others better. Our weaknesses can be, for example, pride, laziness, dishonesty, and many more. Weaknesses are those skills and abilities that don't come easy to us, to each and everyone. When you are using those skills and abilities, you might struggle. Knowing your weaknesses allows you to understand how you can work around them. Strength and weaknesses are part of being self-aware. When you know your strength and your weaknesses, you can create, develop, or create a developed strategy that focuses on your specific development needs. And last importance of knowing oneself is understanding yourself. So this tells us who we are and make us able to accept ourselves. This helps us other people in us when we understand and believe in ourselves. You should believe on yourself first before others believe on you. So, these are the four importance of knowing ourselves. I have here a short but meaningful statement by Socrates. The know thyself. According to Socrates, true wisdom is knowing what you do not know. I'll repeat. According to Socrates, true wisdom is knowing what you do not know. So an essential part of knowing yourself must be recognizing the limits of your own wisdom and understanding. Knowing what you do genuinely know and knowing what you have yet to learn. Knowing yourself is not about skimming surface like finding your favorite color, favorite music, favorite food, favorite animal, drink, and many more. Although those favorites might give you a hint or some clues on your true personality. Knowing yourself is about delving much deeper. What have you noticed from the presentation? Is there something wrong? Or what have you noticed from my presentation? Kindly comment it on the chat box. Let us see. What have you noticed from my presentation? Is there something wrong? Kindly comment your answer. Is there something wrong? Let us see. Okay, so I saw your answers. There are some of you who are answering. How about the others? What have you noticed from the presentation? So thank you for the others who participated. So I know 
that you can see on the presentation is along deeper with small with capital and small letters. It is not a typographical error. It means in our journey and delving yourself, it will be a tough and long journey with so many ups and downs. We could be able to meet people who will lift us, but there are also who will pull us down. Always remember to surround yourself with good people. It is not bad to make friends with anyone. Just see to it that they are reliable. When you surround yourself with positive influences, it becomes that much easier to stay focused on your end goals in life. You'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel energized and motivated when um, you spend time with these people. You won't be as uh, stressed out. And I am very lucky to share with you that I also have a good friend that who can lift me up, especially in this profession, in the teaching profession. So I hope that you also have those kind of friends. Knowing yourself is a journey. It is about discovering who you are as a human being. Yes, the real you. The furious version of yourself. The journey is unpredictable and engage you deeply as it brings you face to face with your deepest fears, self-doubt, vulnerabilities, and insecurities. But you should face with those fears, self-doubt, vulnerabilities, and insecurities for you to be able to succeed or become successful. Let me share my story with you. One of my biggest fears since um, when I was young is, is speaking in front of many people. I hate having the attention of many people because for me, I am not pretty, not intelligent, and not powerful like them. I also hate being judged by others because I don't know how to defend myself. But life is so strange. Who could imagine that I'll be speaking in front of many people like this? And my job is speaking in front of many people, having the attention of um, approximately 300 to 400 learners per year. During school days, I have the opportunity to speak and discuss lesson to those 300 to 400 students every day. So a uh, shy girl grown up into someone like who you are speak today. I have learned a lot throughout my journey, throughout the years. I have learned to always accept the judgment of others and use it for my own improvement. For example, if they say that I'm incompetent, then I'll prove them wrong through my works, through my actions. The journey around knowing yourself can be challenging and scary. First, challenging in a way that you need to put out yourself from the box or do beyond your comfort zone. There would be a certain time that you will lose your patience on your capabilities. You are going to ask yourself if you really can do it. When in your comfort zone, your brain doesn't want anything to change. Getting out from your comfort zone from time to time creates just enough good stress to ramp up your focus, creativity, face, and drive, and it helps you to respond to life stress when unexpected things happen. Forcing yourself into discomfort, then seeing the result will keep you pushing yourself. When there's an element of um, uncertainty 
and you come out on the other side either the same or better than you were before you'll have the confidence to take the opportunity to kick it up a notch towards something that has the potential to be an amazing one and i know that in the future maybe tomorrow in the future you will become an amazing one second is scary scary because we don't know what will happen next in the future there are a lot of uncertainty we don't know when this pandemic will end what would happen in the next days are you going to pass your exam are you going to get employed or are you going to get promoted we don't know until we get stuck on whatever situations that we are facing right now we are not sure on many uncertainties in life it is scary because we are not sure if you are going to succeed or fail but always remember failures are okay don't be scared to fail on anything the important is you try it every ceo and su- successful person's biography highlights failed plans pointing out that mistakes don't define you actually mistakes are celebrated as high points in in the learning process imperfections make people like you according to practical effect people who never make mistakes aren't likable as people who trip up literally figuratively from time to time it shows your flaws and your humanness which are qualities that draw people to you so i hope that everything is clear with you throughout the start of this um topic so now let us go back on my question a while ago so you if you still have your mirror right now you can stare at yourself i'll repeat the question do you see your ideal self or actual self stare on the mirror is it my ideal self or actual self kindly share your answer on the comment box share if it is your ideal self or your actual self kindly share it comment it on the comment section so jake manalo jake manalo answer is actual self farah's answer is actual self so thank you everyone for your participation lawrence Munar, answer is actual self. So let us proceed. Let us define furthermore, what do we mean by ideal self and actual self? Ideal self, it is the self that you aspire to be. The one that you want to attain or accomplish. Ideal self, it is the one that you hope will possess characteristics similar to that of a mentor of some otherly worldly figure so as a human we have a lot of principle in our ideal self from the word ideal it is an ideal um it is an idealized image that we have developed over time based on what we have learned and experienced throughout the years the ideal self could include components of what our parents taught us what we admire in others what our society promotes and what we think is our best interest like for example in my experience when i was young probably at my grade school age i was imitating my teacher my favorite teacher back then that time the door at our house was painted into color green so i am using it as an improvised chalkboard and every time 
from school, I go to our home, I am imitating what my teacher does. The way how she write, the way how she move, the way how she talk. Because for me, when I was a kid, she is an effective teacher because I have learned a lot from her. She treat us like her own daughter. So I thought to myself that one day, I'll become like her. The qualities that I saw on her has become my motivation in achieving what I have now. Actual self is the one that you actually see. It is the self that has characteristics that you were nurtured or in some cases born to have. Actual self is your representation of the attributes that you believe you actually possess or that you believe others believe you possess. The actual self is person's basic self-concept. It is one's perception of their own attributes like intelligence, athleticism, attractiveness, and many more. So if you are aware on yourself, that is what we call as a as the self concept. So actual self is it is who we actually are. It is how we think, how we feel, how we look, how we act. Actual self can be seen by others. But because we have no way of truly knowing how others view us, the actual self is our self image. So I hope that you already know the if you have the correct answer if it is your ideal self or actual self okay so my presentation is that not long but before i end my presentation i want you to meet first my best friend okay so my best friend's name is ligaya so can we pronounce it everyone Ligaya. Okay. So Ligaya, it is a um, Tagalog word which means in English is joy or happiness. So she is cute, right? I hope so. <laughs> so Ligaya is the unika iha of her parents. So since when she was young, her dream is to become a teacher. She used to act and play as a teacher, but she is in doubt if she can because um, for her, she is not intelligent. She loves to explore and tra- travel in the Philippines and soon in other country. So I hope na we could join Ligaya in traveling around the world. So she found out that traveling is very relaxing and can refresh in her mind. Despite of Ligaya's doubt into herself if she can, she is a graduate of education and she will become a teacher someday or in the future. So after 8 months of her graduation, she passed and qualified as licensed public school teacher in Manila. Throughout her journey as a public school teacher, sometimes she feels hopeless, drained, stressed, burned out, but always make herself productive. She always thought to herself that life may be tiring. Learn to rest, not to quit. Despite of experiencing the pandemic, she used the the social media and many platforms to improve herself. It helps her to surpass the anxiety that the pandemic brought to us, to all of us or to most of us. And it helps her to boost her confidence. Ligaya's advice to young professionals like you, like us, is life is so hard. It is like our weather. Here in the Philippines, the weather sometimes 
is it is sunny, very hot, and then at the afternoon it will rain. So if you are in the Philippines, I know you you can relate to Ligaya. So it is always changing. Always remember your goal in life and keep dreaming. Use your available resources to make yourself updated to version 2.0. Problems will come. Solve it. Do not live with it. Like as what they say, life must go on. Be proud on how far you've come and be happy for the person that you've come. Even though the journey is so hard, they are there are still many reasons for you to make yourself tough. Love yourself and believe that you can. Do you believe everyone that Ligaya is one of the speakers today? And Ligaya is me, a proud young professional. So once again, I am Joy Faith Coronado. You can call me Joy or Ligaya from the Philippines. So thank you so much. I hope that you have learned a lot throughout the discussion.